Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. It's a transfer video, the classic style. Uh, it's been a quiet week or so. It's been a quiet time since the Nabil Fakir deal seemingly broke down. That was last Saturday. Uh, the news broke, obviously. I was in Manchester at the time um, on a night out watching the boxing. Uh, and honestly, since then, we've had very, very little to talk about. Shakiri stuff here and there, Alison stuff here and there. Um, but we've just about got enough to get stuck into now. Uh, the World Cup is obviously underway and that does naturally quieten things down. Players tend not to get involved in negotiations with clubs until after. So that's obviously why we got, uh, well, we, we, we thought we got the Fakir stuff done beforehand. Obviously we got Fabinho done beforehand even though he's not part of the World Cup. Kate's coming in. So a lot of it's already shaping up already. But there are still, of course, things we need to address. I'm sure a lot of you want to happen sooner rather than later. And as do I. So let's start with Nabil Fakir because this is obviously the highest profile um, potential deal that, that could have happened or could still happen um, if you kind of read into what his agent and even he has been saying over the last couple of days. So this kind of broke last night what his agent has been saying. His agent said, uh, you know, when asked about the move, uh, he didn't sign because it's not over, the story isn't over. Um, that is it. So that there's no other kind of, there's nothing else to go off from his agent. All he said was, he didn't sign because it's not over. The story isn't over. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've not seen it. I've not seen how it was kind of said. You can normally tell by the body language or anything, but um, you know, it's not. It seems like it's not not completely dead. I mean, the, the Liverpool journalists uh, were kept in the dark mainly. The club aren't giving much away. They obviously. Uh, can't, can't say the way whether it was a medical issue uh, because of the confidentiality reasons. Loads of conspiracy theories going around. Um, is there still some bargaining going on there from one side? Uh, Rory Smith seems to suggest that it was Leon that tried to uh, renegotiate uh, after Liverpool discovered the problem. So we don't really know. Uh, Nabu Fakir has also been asked about it um, and he told reporters that his knee is great. Uh, he goes, my knee is great. Uh, honestly, I feel like before my injury, um, and then he asks whether he'll stay at Lyon, and he goes, I'm with the France team, I'm happy to be here, I'm not here to talk about my personal situation, we'll see, see later. So, I mean, Lyon obviously came out and said that the player's staying. Um, if, if the matter was closed, you'd expect Fakir to come out and say the same. Instead, he's coming out and saying, we'll see, we'll see. You know, so, I mean, if, I don't know about you, but if one of my club's players, if a Liverpool player um, had been confirmed as staying, um, so, you know, if, if, if Gerard in 2005, after he had, he had the U-turn and he said he was going to stay, if a few days later he was at a press conference on, on somewhere else or, or just interviewed while I was on holiday and he goes, oh, we'll see, I'd start to be a bit concerned and I'm, I'm sure Liverpool fans will be as well. So the fact that Fakir is saying that um, means, as far as I'm concerned, there's still, still a chance. And I know some of you are desperate, desperate for him to sign and don't get me wrong, I also was because I've... You know, what I've seen in the play is exactly what we need. Um, even though I'm not a, a Leon expert. Uh, but, you know, his, his style obviously is, is right in line with what I'd like to see at Liverpool. Um, we saw him come on for France against Australia. To be honest, he didn't play well. He, he came on for, what, it must have been 15, 20 minutes and didn't do much at all. Um, I'm not going to read into that, but that, that's just how it is. I wouldn't put it down to an injury issue or a fitness issue. He just couldn't get involved in the game. I think France struggled together in that game, to be quite honest. I think they got more problems than Nabil Fakir. Um, I'm not as desperate as I was to sign him, just because... Um, Obviously, with such high intensity the way we play, and if he is going to be asked to play in that midfield, so much running, so much, so much pressing. He obviously believes his knee is fine. A lot of you are going to point at um, his his record over the past few years. He hasn't missed that many games. I'm sure that's all well and good, uh, but you know, medicals are done for a reason. He's got this issue, uh, and if he gets one more knee problem, one more recurring knee problem, then that could be that for his career. And we've seen careers waste away. Um, you know, we've seen like of Jamie Redknapp. Uh, whose career was cut short with you know many many other cases so what will happen happens um honestly i think it's 50 50. i honestly think it's 50 50. the bookies agree um i would lean towards we don't sign him just because of the concerns you know i, th I think i think there's other players out there um i'm not saying i could name them but then you know there'll be other players out there that can um fill the void salah wasn't first choice you know julian brandt was first choice last time we got salah so um, you know that there are going to be alternatives. 
I like the player for Key. I really do. I, he, he's you know he's an option. He's like a senior. He can play midfield or as part of the front three, um, which is perfect. We need that sort of versatility when we're competing on so many fronts. Um, we'll see. Leave a comment with where you think he will sign or not. Um, so sticking with attacking players. Um, Jordan Shakiri is obviously another one that we know there is interest in. Um, it's been reported by the Merseyside journalist, so we, we, we know we, we know we can at least, you know, confirm its validity, even if nothing happens. Um, now Sky is saying that we've called our interest in him. Um, Twelve and a half million release clause, obviously, as we've touched on in a few videos in the past. Um, look, this is kind of split opinion again. I saw Shakiri against Brazil the other night. Thought he was poor, to be honest. Um, I like the player. Uh, he's a good option. It, it, it's a very partridge shrug signing for me. You know, it's if we get him, we get him. If we don't, I'm not losing any sleep. But Sky is saying we've called our interest. Don't know whether that's got anything to do with any other targets being close, or whether it's uh, um, something to do with the fact that Fakir's fallen through. So Liverpool maybe just rethinking their entire strategy. Have absolutely no idea. So if Sky is saying we've called our interest, then so be it. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I like the player, as I've said. Um, I think he I think he'd provide an extra eight to ten goals a season. Um, I think he's a good option off the bench. He's got pace, strength. He's a bit overweight. Um, there are question marks around his work rate. Um, we've all we, we've all looked into him enough since, since the next started. So the situation is according to Sky that we've called our interest. Uh, another player in attacking positions that we're apparently uh, keen on is Gelson Martins, the Portuguese youngster. Um, he is. Um, he is with the Portugal squad in Russia at the moment. He's 23 years old. Um, it's all going around the sporting list, but in players' contracts being cancelled. It looks like Gelson Martins is going to be available on a free. Um, Sam Wallace of the Independent uh, is saying that Everton want to sign him. Uh, and he's also said uh, that there are, there are other clubs interested, those being Arsenal, Spurs and Liverpool. Uh, so Martins, obviously... Portuguese league, eight goals and eight assists last season, a really good return. The season before that was six goals and nine assists. This is a league only, so he's getting he's involved in a goal every other game, which it which is strong. He plays on the right hand side um, of of their front line. It doesn't you know? I mean, Mo Salah obviously plays there for Liverpool. He plays a couple of games through the middle, Martins, but none on the, on the left whatsoever, um, which is kind of my only concern. He, he's not used to playing in a fluid. Um, front line or front three like Liverpool do. Um, I'm sure Klopp can train that into him. I mean, Mane made a seamless switch from right to left uh, over the season just gone. Um, so look, it's he's, he's obviously a young, exciting player. Um, and if we can just save a big fee on such a quality player, you know, if, if he comes in on a free and he's not going to be on super high wages because he's coming from the Portuguese league, he's not going to be on a mega bucks at Sporting Lisbon. If we can get him in on a decent enough wage, I mean, obviously you have to pay a bit more for free transfers because their agents will say, look, you're getting this player for free. Um, but let's pay up a little bit on the wages to make up for it. And that usually happens. That happened with James Milner. So he could be an option. I mean, it's only Sam Wallace dropping our name in alongside Arsenal, Spurs and Everton. And he might want to come in and play first team football. Um, which we might not be able to promise him. So it's not one to get your hopes up too much about, but the link is there. Um, also, the mirror, uh, let's go to the goalkeeping situation. The mirror are running with the Nick Pope stuff. Um, Alisson, I mean, whenever, I, whenever I've seen Alisson in the last few months, he's not looked great, has he, um, if we're being honest. I mean, I, he made some terrific saves in, um, in Serie A. I, I probably saw, I think I said, I probably saw about half a dozen Roma games in Serie A and I thought some of his saves that he was making were miraculous um, in, in, in regular league games. When, when he's played on a big occasion, um, in the semi-final against Liverpool, he shipped seven um, in total. Um, not all of them his fault, of course, but I think we'd have been criticising him if it was Karras for some of those. Uh, and obviously the one against Switzerland, he, the ball just comes in, it's quite close to him. He could easily come and claim that or punch it away. He doesn't. Um, look, he still probably is an upgrade on Karras. He still probably is a terrific goalkeeper if he's attracting the attention of us and Real Madrid and he's um, Roma is slapping a 70 million price tag on him, then he's obviously great. Um, but yeah, it looks like Liverpool aren't going to pay up that sort of fee, much to a lot of fans' annoyance. Nick Pope uh, obviously had a great season with Burnley. I mean, honestly, no idea if he suits our style, because Burnley is just obviously a very, very different style of football. He's just having a lot of sh uh, shots to save, and he's doing a great job of that, which is more than you can say for a lot of the keepers we've had in recent years. Um, so getting a good shot stopper would be a start. Um, 
is he is he good enough to start attacks early as soon as uh, as soon as he collects the ball? Is he good enough to to pick out teammates with with forty yard passes? Is he good enough to uh, play on the front foot, which Jurgen Klopp wants him to do? Uh, but it looks like if the mirror, uh, specifically Adrian Kajumba of the mirror, is to be believed, uh, then Liverpool are doing their background checks on him to find out about his personality and stuff. I'm sure um, Jordan Henderson and Trent Alexander Arnold would know him well, so Jurgen Klopp's got plenty of sources there. Um, and obviously he'd be cheaper than Alisson, he'd be cheaper than All Black, uh, you know, the dream keeper. I can't imagine he'd be much less than Jack Button, who's apparently around £30 million. So, another one to watch there. I like him as a goalkeeper. I think he was terrific for Burnley all season. He managed to keep Tom Heaton out when he came back from injury. Um, and Heaton's another great keeper. So, yeah, Nick Pope wants to think about Leave a comment whether you think he would be an upgrade on Loras Carriers or a good enough upgrade for us to uh, be comfortable with that goalkeeper for the next few years. That is it for now as far as transfers are concerned. Obviously I've just got done watching Russia versus Egypt. Russia won 3-1. Salah did get the goal for Egypt but they are going to be going out unless there's a miracle. Um, they got no points in their first two games. See, it didn't come on in the first game. It did play today. It was okay. Didn't look quite right. Wasn't match fit. Uh, such a shame for him after that heartbreak uh, in Kiev and now this. At least he got his goal to take home with him. A, you know, a huge moment for him, I'm sure, still. Um, and from a selfish point of view, we get him back uh, wrapped in cotton wool early. He can have a nice break, you know, three or four weeks off. Um, what are we now? Mid-June, yeah. Three or four weeks off um, once he gets home. And then back in for, for end of July, early August, and ready to go um, by second or third game. Maybe if, if, if you want to rest him for the first one, I think that's completely fair enough. So there we go, that's the update, that's the latest on the transfer news. Leave a comment with your thoughts if you've got any concerns, I'm sure you do. Um, and you know, subscribe to my channel if you're new for more updates around this sort of topic. And subscribe uh, or follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook if Ben might say on all of those platforms. And I'll see you next time. Enjoy the World Cup.